Hello friends, my name is Nick and this week's plant of the week is Hoya carnosa, commonly referred to as the wax plant or the porcelain flower. There's also a bunch of other very similar common names. And this is probably the most prevalent common Hoya on the market, but it is not one to be slept on. And I swear when I say this, you are not a true Hoya collector if you are not growing a plain green Hoya carnosa in your home. It is Ugh, it is everything that you need in a Hoya, and it is just really, really not one to be missed. As you can imagine, with this being like the most prevalent common Hoya on the market, this is ridiculously easy to grow. There's very good reason why this one is very common. It is out of all the Hoya in my home, this is the one that grows the best and the easiest for me. This is just two cuttings inside the pot here, which is pretty overwhelming for the amount of foliage and vines that you're seeing here. So the, each cutting has spat out multiple vines and it's constantly putting off new growth for me. So uh, as for the care for this houseplant, this is a rather green Hoya. Most Hoyas are going to thrive like in the windowsill and like a west or east facing window. So some like bright light, some direct sunlight, some indirect sunlight. I'd say this one's going to thrive, maybe pulled back a little bit. I'm growing mine roughly like six to eight feet away from my east facing window. So that's some pretty standard bright indirect light. And I think that's where I really have found the best luck with this house plant. I've even pushed that further in my old home and it was growing perfectly fine. Would this grow fine in the window? Absolutely. The sun stressing, I just don't think would really treat this house plant visually as well as it would with some of the more like variegated varieties that get that beautiful red and pink coloration. Would this get some of that red? Sure, probably. I honestly can't speak from experience. I'm gonna say yes, it probably is going to because it's other varieties do get that red, but just the standard green plant right here, it's just so gorgeous. The watering for this house plant uh, is where I feel like you would come across the most issues, if any. Hoyas are drought tolerant house plants. They have a threshold, but they're not like succulents that like to sit dry for like extended periods of time. Hoyas like to dry out and then be watered like right when they dry out. So uh, this is not in a very big planter. This is in one of those planters that I made back when I was doing pottery. This one's a little wonky, but I just think it really <laughs> gives this plant a lot of character. Uh, so this is a rather small planter, so it dries out pretty quickly. I'm watering this house plant probably once a week. It's only sitting in probably like a, a half cup of soil. It's not very much soil at all, which is the perfect amount for uh, these two cuttings as Hoyas don't like sitting in a lot of space. They like to be really root bound. In fact, once they are root bound, that's when they are going to probably spit off the most growth. So this isn't really a house plant that you're going to want to repot very often. In fact, it's probably going to live inside this tiny planter for another, I'd say two years before I go ahead and maybe pot it up to something just a little bit larger. I think the size of the planter is more important than the material that your planter is made of. I think Hoyas were going to do fine in terracotta planters, just keeping in mind that they're gonna dry out a little quicker in anything that's ugly, ceramic, they'll do fine in plastic. People often grow uh, their Hoyas in semi-hydroponics inside plastic containers, that's totally fine, and you can grow them inside your own mix inside plastic. Don't worry about what the material is, just worry more about the size because you're really going to want to keep your Hoyas root bound, keep them tight. Uh, that's when you're going to run into issues, like I was saying, overwatering or underwatering your Hoyas and that's going to be exacerbated by the wrong size planter. You're also going to want to keep your soil pretty chunky and coarse. I will usually just grab a houseplant soil, standard houseplant soil, or you can use a cactus mix. And then I will throw in a heaping amount of perlite or pumice, some kind of like puff volcanic rock. Uh, some orchid bark is fantastic. I prefer finer orchid bark, but even larger chunks are fine. You can see in here, I have some decent sized chunks, absolutely fine. Some charcoal's great too. And that's going to give you a bunch of uh, coarseness and aeration for your Hoyas, which these are epiphytes. These in nature aren't really growing in soil. They're growing symbiotically with other plants in nature, like on trees and rooting onto them. So uh, these don't necessarily need to live in soil. You could also grow them in like sphagnum moss. They'll grow perfectly fine in that too. But if you're using a soil mixture, I would be sure to use a more coarse, chunky mixture. You're gonna have much better luck with that. As these are tropical house plants, they're going to appreciate higher humidity. Uh, but once again, it's completely unnecessary for just growing a standard Hoya Carnosa. They're gonna do totally fine in your standard household humidity. You don't even really need to use a humidifier in the winter months as some other plants are going to require. So uh, as you could imagine too, with these very thick leaves, they're going to withstand low humidity very well. So I wouldn't worry there. Uh, same with the temperature. These can handle some pretty high temperatures. Hoyas are known for handling like very arid conditions. But on the other end of the spectrum, you're not really gonna want to have these in anything less than like 50 degrees, which I feel like I always say this, but I don't think you're gonna be dealing with that. I think standard household temperature is gonna to be totally fine 
as with most house plants, just be mindful if you're keeping these near very drafty windows in the wintertime, let's say that. Propagating these is extremely easy. I have a very high success rate with propagating Hoyas. All you need is one node. A node is where the leaf meets the stem, and that's where the majority of the roots are going to come out of, and that's where the new growth is going to come out of. So you're gonna to have to have at least one node. However, the more the merrier, like in this case right here, there's this bare node right here. So I would probably cut this plant down to here, submerge this plant right here, or this node right here in water, and then leave this one out to grow. But if I also wanted to just cut off this one right here and just shove this down in some moss or some water, this would also root up with just this one node totally fine. So you can do it however works for you and the plant that you have, but water, sphagnum moss, hydroton, or the Leca clay pebbles, any medium is fine. Uh, subjecting your Hoyas to higher humidity, like maybe by putting them inside a plastic bag or an enclosure while they are rooting is going to quickly speed up the process. Without the humidity, it's totally fine. Like I said, I've had some pretty good success with rooting Hoyas, but just for a quicker, easier, more seamless process, I highly recommend increasing the humidity during that process. Uh, unfortunately, Hoyas, I don't believe they are technically non-toxic. I think this is kind of debated. I think on like the ASBCA website, it says they're non-toxic, but if you cut Hoyas along the stem or if you break a leaf, they do produce a little bit of a latex sap, which I don't believe is good for either you or animals to be ingesting or getting on your skin in high quantities or for long periods of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and say these are moderately toxic to pets. However, they are very succulent. I've never really had animals or found animals to want to chew on these, but if you do have very nippy animals, I would keep that in mind. And last but not least, uh, the pests. The only thing that Hoyas really attract is mealybugs, I'm sure. There's a little mealybug right here. You can just see this little like white puff right here. It's really easily taken care of. It's just a minor nuisance. If you find your Hoyas are completely infested with mealybugs, it could affect the appearance of the houseplant where the leaves will look like they require a watering even when the houseplant is moist or the soil is moist just because the uh, bugs are sucking the moisture out of the leaves or the juices out of the leaves. So uh, that will be really the only visual effect that the mealybugs will have. Uh, but they are pretty easy to control. I just used my fingers to clean off that one right there. But if you wanna do a thorough clean, you can use some water. I'll just place them in the shower or you can use some rubbing alcohol and I'll just put it on like a paper towel or a cotton swab and I'll just uh, spot treat the pest as I find them. They'll usually be hiding inside the creases like where the leaf meets the stem or if you have any of the more like uh, foldy, folded up Hoyas like a Hindu rope Hoya or a Hoya carnosa compacta. Those are much more likely to harbor mealybugs inside the leaves there but uh, any grooves are definitely where the mealybugs are gonna hide. But that's really the only pest problem I have with these and it's just, a nuisance. I wouldn't really call it like a death sentence like some of the other <laughs> pests that we experience in some other of our house plants. But that's going to do it for today. How to care for Hoya carnosa. Like I said, if you are a true Hoya connoisseur, I think that this is one that you're probably already growing in your home. I like to think. Uh, but if not, I'd say get on it because this is probably like $5 for a starter plant and you're not going to regret it when you have just this super fun just mess of just classic Hoya leaves. It really is something my home would not be the same without it. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you don't already, you can follow me on Patreon for even more houseplant content. You can follow me at Philly Foliage on TikTok and Instagram. Follow me on YouTube or subscribe to my YouTube channel, whatever they call it. And I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.